Today I've got something for you that is not computer generated. It's not AI. The only place it's imagined is in the minds of the engineers who put it together. The only place it's generated is in the real world where they built Starship, the largest, most powerful rocket we have ever made. We've got a lot of different footage for you today, so let's get going in today's Starbase summary for Starship Flight 10. All over the map, there is absolutely crazy footage here. Now, a lot of this we've got the audio for in some of our other videos. So today I'm going to be telling you about what we're seeing in each shot. This one here by DYs is slow motion. And the specific placement of this camera is very intentional. You see how it's right behind that leg? So the exhaust is sort of going out away at an angle. And look at the exhaust of the engines. The purple exhaust, this is extreme slow motion here. Maybe not extreme. Look at it absolutely torching the booster quick disc. And you see the armored doghouse plate, whatever you want to bunker, you want to call it. Look at that. And it gets worse. As the rocket actually tilts over, the exhaust is directly, <laughs> good grief, directly hitting the booster quick disconnect. So a lot of work happens to that quick disconnect. It's because it gets absolutely torched. Now, here's another shot. This is Jack Beyer all the way seven miles away from the launch pad. This is the roof of the Margaritaville Beach Resort, South Padre Island, getting the lift off here. God, look at the mock diamonds. <laughs> that is, a, it's got to be a thousand feet of rocket exhaust firing out from behind that stack. And if you don't know, the Bouncy, uh, actually, the, the diamond shape that's in the exhaust behind the rocket is caused by the, the exhaust wanting to expand, right? It comes out of the rocket engine, and it wants to expand. It wants to go out into the atmosphere. But the atmosphere pushes it back. And when the atmosphere pushes it back, the, it sort of rebounds off the atmosphere and goes towards the center. But then it hits itself in the center, and it rebounds again, and it goes out towards the atmosphere again. And then it comes in again, and you get that, that diamond shape bouncing out and in and out and in, or expanding out and bouncing in and bouncing out and bouncing in. Anyways, here is another liftoff shot, and look at how much the, well, there's going to be a lot of liftoff shots. Uh, look at how much the rocket tilts off the pad. It's avoiding the pad. It does not, if anything goes wrong, it doesn't, <laughs> not really much went wrong this time. Uh, if anything goes wrong, it does not want to lean over. But this here, this is a remote-operated camera. This is not a person with their hand on the camera. Somebody has logged into this. It electronically via IP from their computer at home, probably a thousand miles away, and tracked the rocket lifting off. Gah. Now, some of these shots, you'll see like a jack shot went into a cloud a little bit. You got the lift off. We, we got the lift off. I was at the hotel as well. And uh, you saw the lift off, then it went into a cloud. We have cameras basically in every direction around the launch pad. And we do it for a reason. Um, we're not going to get skunked by a single cloud. It's like, oh, no, our camera can't see the rocket because there was a cloud there. A lot of times there may be one in one direction that blocks the view, but it's not in the other direction. And so we have all of these different shots from all of these different angles, and we catch all the different parts of flight. Here's another one from D. This is going to be back from uh, the Rocket Ranch viewing outpost, it looks like. If you all haven't looked up Rocket Ranch, you ever want to see one of these launches, you want to be as close as publicly possible. God, the mock diamonds. Look up Rocket Ranch. Please check them out. They are awesome folks. They almost have like a, like a festival thing that goes on there. About four miles away from the launch pad. They get you buses. They like bus you in so you can watch it. But they were kind enough to let uh, some of our folks, D and Max were over there, watching from the Rocket Ranch viewing outpost. But look at that. You see the roll of the rocket as it takes off from the pad. Oh, here's me. I was seven miles away as well. Uh, Jax was manually tracked, like hand on tripod. This is a, I'd like to be like SpaceX and say it's still experimental robotic tracking system I've put together. But uh, this isn't stabilized. You can see I got a little little wave in there. I'm actually controlling this with an Xbox controller. As it takes off, I'm using the right uh, analog stick on an Xbox controller to do the pan, pan, and tilt, yep, that's right, of the, uh, of the tracking mount. But look, you can really see that roll. I've just got seven miles of atmosphere between me and the rocket, so it's a little hazy. But, oh, come on, you got it. Oh, maybe that was intentional. You were just going for the engines. God, and then it went into the clouds. 
Now, even though it went into the clouds from my perspective, it didn't go into the clouds from Dee's perspective, almost a, maybe not 180 degrees away, maybe 120 degrees uh, on the other side. And look at that. You've seen all the static shots posted on social media of the vapor cone, and it's like, cool, all right, nice, that looks amazing. But here, D got video <laughs> of the vapor cone forming. That, one, that had almost like a, like a chromatic effect to it. It looked like a rainbow. But the video of that entire formation of that massive vapor cone is absolutely crazy. Now look at this here. Not only do you have the purple of the exhaust, you start to see the exhaust. Uh, you don't have the mock diamonds anymore, right? The exhaust is spreading out, and the atmosphere is thin enough that the atmospheric pressure is not able to push it back together into that mock diamond. Now, look at this. Uh, look, you know something? I'm not going to apologize. This is cool stuff. The fire you saw coming out in all directions is the hot staging. And what that means, I know a lot of people are like, well, I know what the hot staging is. You don't have to tell me again. The hot staging is when they light the upper engines of the Starship itself, which sits on top of the super heavy booster, right? And the engines of the Starship literally hit the top of the booster and come out these holes in the side of the connector between them, right? So you get that sort of flame halo effect, which is really cool. Here's back to me over from the roof of the hotel. Uh, tough for me to re-catch it after it was in that cloud, but the venting helped. So when I see all the venting there, I was able to relocate it in the sky. You can see the hot staging ring there for just a second. And then we're going to cut over to this. This thing is cooking. It was really hard to keep it in frame, even with the robotic mount. And the rates are changing so much. It's accelerating, right? Because it's, it's falling. It's getting speed. Look at how fast it's going when it goes through the cloud. All right, that was a little movie magic. There was a cut in there because it, it took a lot longer to find that again <laughs> in the cloud. But you see the landing burn. And what they did on this one, they, they brought it down. It's over the gulf. It's not getting caught by the chopsticks back at the launch pad. But they lit some of the engines. And they slowed it down, right? And then the fire, you see, when it fl sort of flames out like that, those are the engines turning off. And uh, what, a one and a half, two boot? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Two booster lengths above the surface of the gulf, they shut down the final engine, and they just let the thing fall into the gulf. Um, now, it, it last time, if you're not last time, a few times ago, if you remember booster 13, they soft-touched it down, like all the way uh, to the surface of the ocean. They didn't turn the engines off when it was four, six hundred feet above the surface. They turned them off like right as it was touching down, and it was a soft splashdown, and it, it survived. It didn't explode, right? Well, the problem with that is that then it floated on the surface of the water for some amount of time, right? Hours, I think. And it actually floated from its touchdown point all the way down into Mexican waters, like, what was it, 20 miles, 30 miles, something like that? But it posed a navigational hazard, and it was moving, right? It was floating across the water, and it was changing positions. So here, since they weren't catching it, they're expending the thing anyways— turning off the engines and letting it fall the last few hundred feet, and then it explodes and falls apart, should ensure that it rapidly sinks down to the bottom of the, the gulf, and uh, you don't have a floating navigational hazard out there. So I haven't heard of reports uh, that, it, that it did float or there were pieces that floated or anything like that. But anyways, here's another view over from the Rocket Ranch outpost. You know, this time was tough because... Uh, we got three scrubs in there, right? We had the t attempt on Sunday, and Rocket Ranch was absolutely packed on Sunday. This entire lot was almost full of people. And then Monday, there's another attempt, but it scrubbed as well. A lot of people had to get back home. They took off the weekend from their job, and oh, now it's Monday, and i got to go back. Some people stayed, but uh, that one scrubbed too. And on Tuesday, well, even less people were able to stay. It's one of the challenges of watching rocket launches. Uh, give us a week, and we'll probably get it off the pad, right? But if you go out there for one day, or it aligns with a weekend where you can get off work, and then it scrubs into the weekdays, it can be very difficult to actually catch a launch. Oh, wow. We're doing this one, I guess. All right. Well, this is me with the robotic tracking rig from the roof of the hotel. There you can see it going into the cloud, of course. Now, hopefully this is sped up. Yeah, it's sped up. Me frantically searching for it. There's a... Uh, I think for members, we'll release the audio here because we've got all the, the background audio chatter as we're yelling at each other, trying to get eyes on where the rocket is. And you can see me 
trying to look at the sky with my eyes and then trying to see the rocket, which I couldn't see it for most of this time. It was so tiny. And then finally I saw it there. You could see it in the spotting camera. The bottom camera is the spotting camera. Oh, did I have it for a second and I didn't realize it? No. <laughs> oh, gosh. I might have had it. I didn't know I had it in the spotting camera. Okay, there. There. When it started to do that, I could see it in the spotting camera. Now, wait a second. No, maybe it just passed through the spotting camera. You can't even see it in the spotting camera. But there it went through that cloud. And then we're looking for it, looking for it. Where'd it go? And there it lights. God, you can't even see it in the spotting camera, really. <laughs> then I take my hands off. I'm like, I'm not touching it. It's good to go. Uh, anyways, folks, hey, it's just a quick one here. It's a, a little bit of the behind the scenes, inside baseball, um, explaining the different shots and stuff you see there. Look, there were thousands of people who saw this thing in real life. It is not CGI. It is a real rocket that really exists. Tell your friends. We will see you nerds later.